Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to start by saying thanks for checking out my initial rad mission review and letting me know about the bikes you guys picked up yourselves. I'm making this video as a follow-up, as a few viewers have been wanting to see some of the details behind the modifications on my mission. I'm going to share those with you and give you some recommendations on changes you can make to your bike too. It sounds like a lot of people bought a mission during the crazy sale that Rad was having on them recently where they were as low as $4.99 brand new and some viewers even reported that they were able to pick the bikes up for cheaper due to rebates or discount codes. I figure there are a lot of new missions out there right now and I've always enjoyed modifying my bikes and suiting them to my needs so I wanted to show you some of the biggest additions and changes that I've made to my rig. The things that I'm going to be covering are a premium headlight that I added to the front of the bike with the front basket that's available from Rad and how I mounted it, some changes that I made to the light itself, I'm going to be covering my new cockpit setup which is basically the combination of new mountain bike handlebars, nicer grips, repositioning my pedal assist controller, upgrading the new display, and then also the thumb throttle thing that I got from Etsy. Let's start with the headlight since that seemed to get the most questions. I'm using the premium headlight from Rad as well as their front basket. If you add a rack or front basket to the front of the bike, you need to reposition the headlight that came with the mission so that it's still effective. The stock headlight is mounted to a plate that's bolted down by the faceplate of your stem where it meets the handlebars. I removed this piece along with the stock headlight and modified this bracket to attach the premium headlight to the front of the basket. I bent this piece to be wider and I also used a Dremel to make the plastic on the light itself narrower. Another nice feature of this mod is that these holes on the side, previously for your stem bolts, will help you route the wire for your new light. Another small change I made is that I added some masking tape to the inside of the plastic faceplate on the light, which really helped dampen some of the vibration noise on the bike. I also added a frame bag to the bike from a company called Jand. You can buy it on Amazon, I put the link in the description below, but it fits the bike perfectly and it carries a spare inner tube as well as the equipment for changing a flat tire. I also put my phone and my wallet on the other side so that I don't have to carry anything in my pockets while I'm riding to work. It's also kind of nice because it hides the battery a little bit I think. The battery kind of blends in with the bag and it almost looks like I just have one giant frame bag rather than if there was a space there where you could see the outline of the battery by itself. So overall, I think it actually adds to the aesthetic of the bike and helps it be a stealthier e-bike when you're out there on the road. Then towards the back of the bike, the biggest change that I would say I made is that I added this Knight Rider Cherry Bomb 100 tail light. It's a 100 lumen rear light. I put the link in the description below. The 100 is super bright, and to me, now that we're going into the winter months, Visibility is a priority if you want to keep yourself safe on the road. Not only are you more visible with two rear tail lights now, but you have the option of turning off the stock ones on the bike to save battery and still using the external light to make yourself visible on the road. I added full front and rear fenders to the bike that I got on sale, which prepares me for the winter months here in Seattle. I've never commuted by bike through the winter before, so I'm kind of excited to see how everything holds up, including myself. Another kind of cool upgrade that I did to the bike is that I added Tannis tire protection to the rear tire. Tannis is basically a layer of foam between the inner tube and the tire that will stop most sharp objects you're going to encounter on the road from going through the tires and puncturing your inner tube. I had gotten two flats in the course of one week with one of them in the rear, which is almost impossible to change if you're out on the street due to the nature of the axle and the motor plugs. I carry all the stuff I need in order to fix a front flat, which for me is pretty quick. It's about a 5 or 10 minute job, but the rear is not something I want to deal with at any point. So for me, adding the tire protection was worth it. Finally, the changes to my cockpit. I installed a set of generic mountain bike bars that I bought on Amazon and a set of lock-on ergonomic grips. I also recently decided to reposition my pedal assist controller to a more comfortable position, flipping it upside down and on the bottom of the bar similar to how you would mount a shifter. This lets you press the buttons more easily without moving your thumb to the top of the handlebar, and I definitely prefer it. Now, I believe in speed. I also wanted the more power button to be in the most comfortable position for me on the bottom. My most recent addition to the bike is this little thumb throttle attachment I got on Etsy. 
It's essentially a 3D printed thumb paddle with a sturdy rubberized zip tie to attach it to your twist throttle that comes with the bike. Overall, I enjoy using my thumb for the occasional throttle boost rather than rotating my whole wrist, but you really have to cinch this thing down tight. Due to the tapered nature of the stock throttle, it's possible for the zip tie to slip down the grip into a place that doesn't work for my hands. I'm still glad I picked it up, and they're pretty inexpensive, so it was certainly worth a try. I have the upgraded display from Rad as well, which is super easy to install with just one plug and the tools they give you with the bike. It gives you more information like speed, distance, the motor's current power output in watts, and also allows you to access a few more of the motor settings than the stock controller does. I'm not going to go into too many details about the settings that are available here, but the information is out there if you're curious. After all, the bikes were designed to go certain speeds and draw a specific amount of power, so if you modify them too much you won't get the battery performance that you expect, and you may wear parts down faster than you'd like as well. Overall, my goal was to modify my mission to be the most suitable commuter bike that I could for the coming season while still keeping it fun to ride. I need to be visible, I don't want to be wetter than I need to be, and I want to ride comfortably without any kind of pack on my back. I'm happy with where the bike is at now, but I'm sure it'll continue to evolve over time. A lot of the items that I picked up for my bike from Amazon are listed in the description below, and the other stuff is all from Rad Directly or from Etsy Creators. Using the links in the description really helps support my channel and future videos, as does subscribing and liking the video. If you know someone who just bought a Rad Mission and might benefit from these mods, send it their way. Cheers, and thanks again for stopping by. I'll try and answer questions in the comments when I'm able. See you out on the road!